Today we continue on in, in our series that has to do with uh, what the small groups, the life groups are studying in the video form, and it's called All the Places to Go, and the whole idea behind it is that there are open doors still left for you in our life, and God is perfectly willing to open up another door of opportunity for you all. It's not too late. It's not too late. In fact, I stand here today, and I am living in an open door of my life, because as I told you last week, um, I went through this time of depression. I went through this time of struggle. I went through a time of believing a label. Honestly, I believed a label that I was too old for ministry, and I would never, ever get back in a church again, and I believed that just very strongly, and um, I got to the point, though, where I, I prayed, even though I'm too old, I believed, even though I'm too old, is there still an open door left for me in my life? God, would you bless me? And, and I'll have to say that this title of this message, Bless Me, this title five or six years ago would be uncomfortable for me because it seemed very presumptuous to be able to stand in front of God in our prayers and say, bless me, God. Doesn't it almost sound arrogant? God, bless me, exclamation point. If I own a, a Christian business, God, bless my business, exclamation point. May it be prosperous, oh God. If I am a if I'm a young high school basketball player, does it sound presumptuous? Is it odd? Is it wrong to go in front of God in our prayers and say, God, bless my basketball ability. Help my jump shot, oh God. Bless me, oh God. Now, I am all for God bless America, and I'm all for God bless the children that are suffering, and I'm all for those kinds of prayers, but bless me, God. So, in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, there is this two-passage scripture verse that's dedicated to a man who we have no idea who he was, except that he pops into the scripture for two verses, and then he goes. We don't hear any more about him, but it was important enough that the writer of scripture thought it would be and should be included, and I'm going to tell you why it's important, because we're spending a few more weeks on this whole idea, and here's how it goes. Now, Jabez is his name. Jabez was more honorable than his brother. So we find out that Jabez is a good guy. God thinks he's a good guy. And then it switches to his mother, and it says his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. In other words, it is saying, Mom was having a bad day. Mom was having a really bad day, a really bad life because she named her child pain. That's what it means in Hebrew. That's what Jabez means, pain. So as we talked about last week, like imagine having that label. I had the label of too old for me, but imagine having the label pain. And you go through the li life and you start, like you meet people and say, hey, my name's pain. How you doing? Like, hey, or, or it, it literally means I will cause pain, or one who causes pain. Hey, my name is one who causes pain. How are you? Nice to meet you. You talk about a label in your life, but to Jabez's credit, he still believes that there is a God who can open a door in his life. So here's what he says. And Jabez called to the God of Israel saying, uh-oh, there's that word. Oh, that you would, really? Bless me, indeed. And the indeed part here in the Hebrew way of, of, uh, of writing, when, when they say indeed in a sentence, it means like three exclamation points. Bless me, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. And I, five or six years ago, would say, Really? And he goes on, we'll talk about this next week, and enlarge my territory of influence. John actually prayed that way today. That your hand would be with me. And realize he believes he's, he believes he's pain. 
He's a pain. And so he says, and keep me from evil so that I may not cause pain. Or another way of looking at this, I don't want to cause other people pain and feel that pain. Oh, God, I know that I'm a pain. That's what my mom's always called me. But I still believe that you can open a door in my life. And catch this next part. It's really cool. It says, so God granted what he requested. So here's what, here's how I'm going to sum this up. God grants a request that begins with, bless me, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Are you kidding me? You know why I'm uncomfortable with this? Because bless me sounds like give me. Hand open, standing before God in prayer and saying, give me. I'm just uncomfortable with that. Give me, God. Until one day, God taught me to pray. I'm not going to go through it today, but when, when I was so burnt out, when I was depressed, when I was when I had nothing left to give anybody and I resigned my church because I had, to, I had to rest up for my own health and I had nothing to give anyway, when I resigned my job as a pastor for over 20 years at this one church, that also meant that I had no money flow coming in. I was driving the school bus, but not the same. So I had no money coming in. But I wanted to read. I wanted to hear what God had to say in my life. I wanted so desperately to have books to read, but I had no money to buy books. So I signed up for a free Christian ebook mailing list. And once a month, they, once a month in my inbox, there would be a, an email that had a free ebook that I could read. And the very first book in that whole thing was a book called Total Surrender. Now, I'd never surrendered before in my life like that. Because until you're really broken and you have no more strength, you have nothing more to give. Because I always had more. I always had ability. So I still had ability. I could, I could use that to get out of the tough situation. I had a little bit of money. I could use that to get out of the situation. I had a little bit of physical strength. I had a, I had a strong, um, you know, self-driven, I, could, I can do it. You know, me and God. But when God took all of that away, I had nothing. And so God just then clarified it through a book called Total Surrender by Andrew Murray, which is where that illustration that Gerard mentioned earlier came from. This idea of try to write with a pencil and have, or a pen and have somebody else grab onto that pen also and try to write your name. It's going to be very tough because it takes a surrendered pencil and not more than one influence. So God says, I, I want to teach you how to pray, but first I need to teach you to surrender. And you, you've learned that now, but I want to clarify it. This is what you're doing. And then my second book next month was on the Lord's Prayer. Now that you've learned how to surrender, I want to teach you how to pray. You know that Lord's Prayer that you've read about all your life and you've even preached about? You know, you know that Lord's Prayer? Like, it is the model prayer for you every single day of your life. It has within it a structure that you should just kind of pray for because there are topics that you should include every single day of your life. It doesn't take long. It can just be a few minutes per day, but you need to include these topics every day that are in the Lord's Prayer. And from that day on, I have done that. Here's the Lord's Prayer, basically. It says, hallowed be your name. In other words, a mindset when we pray is that we should start off not with the stuff that we want, but instead when we start off, we say, God, you are a good God. We get our mind off of ourselves and the stuff that's going wrong in our life, and we say, I am so blessed to have you, God. I am so blessed to be a child of God. You are a good father. You are a good God. You are on my side. And that in and of itself will change your attitude. There's a God who cares. And then 
goes on and says, in your kingdom, come. Which means, God, I willfully resign the post of king of my life today. And I'm going to get off the throne of my life. And it has to be daily because somewhere between the time our head hits the pillow and we wake up, we somehow, like overnight, we get back on the throne. I don't know how it works, but every single day we have to pray, God, get back on the throne of my life. You are in charge. And, by the way, your will be done. So it starts off, it says the right attitude toward prayer, and this is surrender. It is, God, you are a good God. God, I get off the throne of my life, and God, your Decisions are best because I am just me and I can't see past the length of my arm practically. I need your help so your will be done. Notice in green, it's all about your, your, your. It's all about God, God, God. God said, surrender yourself if you're going to pray. And then you know what it says? How would be your name? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, oh no. Give me. You're kidding me. Give us this day. Give. You're kidding me. Because give sounds an awful lot like bless. Open-handedly going to God and saying, can you say it? Give me. Are you serious? Give me, God. And then I'm saying, Jesus said it, so like, must be okay. Give me. Bless me. But understand, it is in the context of your, your, your. It's in the context of God, God, God. It is in the context of God. You are an incredible God. God, you are good at what you do. So I'm going to get off the throne of my life, and it's your will that is best. So give me, God, in that context. And it throws in some other things that are important. And forgive me. Deliver me from temptation. Deliver me from evil. So here's a, here's a summary on the screen. It is like, your, your, your. It's, it's God, you're great. God, I get off the kingdom of the throne of my life. God, your will be done. And give me. And forgive me. And deliver me. And then how does it end? Back to your, your, your. God, God, God. It's for your kingdom. In other words, it's for your ultimate plans. I am here on this earth as part of your kingdom plans. I am not here by random accident. I am put here on this earth to do good things in Christ. I am put here on this earth to be the workmanship of God for your kingdom. And it's by your power, not my power, that I do this. And it is for your glory and not my glory. So it starts off with your, 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 God, God, God. And then it says, give me and forgive me and protect me, keep me from evil. And then back to God, 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 for it's all about you and it's by your strength and it's for your glory. And in that context, God is fine with bless me. Hmm. So, Christian business person. So, Christian employee, so whoever you are, whatever you're doing in life, whatever you want to get better at, however you want to achieve in life, it's okay to say, bless me, God. Bless me as a teacher, God. Bless me. Bless my influence, God. May I be able to teach more, God. May I be able to get even other positions if that's in your will. God, bless me. That's okay. It's okay for a young Christian basketball player to say, say, God, bless me at my abilities. Why is that okay? Well, look at Abraham. Genesis 12, 2. God says this to Abraham. I will make you into a great. In other words, I will make you great. A great nation, and I will bless you. Look at this. I will even make your name great. Why? So that you can be a blessing. 
I'm not interested in making your business great so you make so much money that you can't already, you don't know what to do with it. I'm interested in making you and your business and you as an employee or whatever you do, I'm, I'm interested in making you a better basketball player so it gives you a greater platform so that you can do more for God. So that you can bless others with your life. So go ahead and say it. Bless me, God. Bless me richly. Open up new doors of influence in my life. Open them wide. Not so I can become rich and famous, but so that I can then, in turn, be a blessing to others. That, God, is all over. Bless me so that I might bless others. And that's why God granted that prayer. So, again, two books, two books, and there were more. There were more in this monthly ebook list. Maybe I'll tell you more about them because they have influenced who I am today. God kept giving me new free ebooks every month that, that still influence me to this day. So the first one was, okay, if you want to pray the bless me prayer, if you really want to pray in general, do you know how you start? It's with surrendering yourself. It's not about me, me, me. It's about your, your, your. It's about God, God, God. And in there is, and would you give me my daily bread? Would you give me this for today? And then it's all about God, God, God. And the second book was on the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to just say this. Hmm. There are open doors for you. There are many, many open doors yet. It hasn't stopped. God wants, I'm living proof. I went through a door in my life where I got to the point where I learned that if I prayed a surrendered prayer and I gave it all over to God and I just said, God, I trust you. Please bless me so that I can bless others. That's the way it's done. So pray it. Bless me, God. It's okay. Jesus said it's okay. Bless me, God. Give me God. Within the context of it's all about God, 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 and being the person that you can be for him.